The Dollar General number 77 Chevy in the NASCAR Bush series on NASCAR 07 is one of the best paint schemes in that game. However, in reality, it was doing a whole lot more wrecking than it was winning, and the man behind this machine at the time was none other than Bernie Lamar. He began racing carts at the age of five and became a well-known driver on the West Coast. Board with Bernie Lamar as he goes down in turn one. Marty, this nice. young man is looking for some experience today, isn't he? Absolutely, BP, and he is the next Kevin Hoder, uh, Kevin Harvick protege. You know, the first one worked out. He's out there beside you in the booth, so that didn't work out too good, did it, Wally? <laughs> but uh, I'm just kidding, Wally. But uh, this kid is a young man. He's 25 years old, out of California, and Harvick filled him in two races this year in the West Series, and he won both of them at Phoenix and California. A lot of talent behind that wheel. They're trying to cultivate it and get him in some more Bush Series races later on this year and next year. His USAC West championships and performance in the Southwest Series of NASCAR car spoke for itself and in the first opportunity Kevin Harvick gives him he goes out and wins Lamar's acceleration to the Bush series was astounding but he was quickly brought back to reality 25 years old out of Sacramento California currently third in the NASCAR Southwest series got a Southwest win at Phoenix two NASCAR West wins and a limited schedule in 2005 trying to get some experience today here at Kansas Speedway he got some experience, but it's not what he was hoping for. Just gets loose down the corner. He might have gotten into the apron. What do you think? Might have touched the apron with the left sides. And watch and listen. Now we see Foyt just gets right underneath the 33. We talked about it earlier. He's too close to that car getting in the corner. And he gets sideways and loses it. It's right Bernie Lamar. 33 and at the 33, he just decided, I think I'll just drive in your door. <laughs> Bernie Lamar trying to get some experience in the NASCAR Bush Series. So close racing here at Homestead. The caution comes out. Bernie Lamar opened up his NASCAR Bush Series career with a dismal 37.5 average finish in those two starts. And to make matters worse, I can't put him in a much worse era of the NASCAR Bush Series than the well-known dismal 2006 season in which 33 of the 35 Bush races ended up being won by cup guys. But in the very beginning, it was looking as if Lamar was holding his own, already competing for a victory in his third career start. Half a lap to go. Stewart leads. Lamar, the rookie, second. Boyer inside on, of Lamar. They're down there, will you? Come on. Come on. I don't think he's got enough time. Mike Dillon trying to urge his driver to the line. Uh oh, here we go. Here we go. Casey Compton into the wall. Michael Walker oh. is around. Denny Hamlin hard into Elliott Sadler. Stewart takes the checkers. The caution obviously oh. another hard hit. Despite Lamar's underdog runner-up finish, he wasn't even granted a post-race interview by NBC. Lamar opened up the season as high as sixth in the standings with one top five and two top tens in the first nine races. But the fall would be dramatic, as you're about to see. Lamar would only score one more top ten the rest of the season. 20 they were looking for because I anticipate possibly we'll see these guys back to pit road now. Whoa. Kenny Schrader. Schrader uh, kind of got into the back of the 77. Then he got into the side of the 77. Schrader in the green 66. Bernie Lamar in the yellow 77. Around he went. It's, it's, it's still Spinner. going on, Bernie guys. Bernie Lamar in the 77. White flag. The caution came out. Nah. Yeah, the caution got the was caution. out. Got the caution coming to the white. I know the difference. He was he was just about to throw the white flag and then the caution came out. That's right, because the way the rule used to be is once the leader takes the white flag, we'll see at the payoff window. Come on around. He about spins out, 06 does, and uh, that's what backed everything. See him, okay. and then Bernie came along and he may have gotten punted. I'm not sure because I think he may have checked up because the 06 was loose in front of him. Watch the 34, Watch 34 car, the white car up on the outside. He gets a little loose right here. And then Lamar has nowhere to go. He kind of make contact. And that turns everybody else almost turned the 38 car of Leffler over. Paul Menard trying to slip through, didn't quite make it. 
Add the 88 McFarland to those involved. And Menard and Leffler, two of our Bush Series regulars that are up in the top 10 in points. There's onboard camera. There's Bernie Lamar, the 77 car on the outside. Let's see if Clint comes up here and makes a little bit of contact. He did, looked like Bernie Lumber may have had to get off the throttle a little bit. You know, that's that's a situation where Clint Boyer was very, very close. He didn't just run up there and hit him. It looked like Bernie Lamar had to get out of the throttle. And when he did, Clint Boyer made some slight contact. Gene Need's got a lot of work to do this week. Yeah. The Gene Need crew chief on that car. Again, this is our fourth caution. We look back at how this took place. Here we are. This is right past the start finish line. Ooh. Well, it actually like started on the front stretch here. It looked like he got clipped in his right, right rear and turned him. And uh, boy, at, the, at that part of the straightaway, that makes it tough to try to avoid stuff at that speed. And Carl Evers again, oh, more trouble. That's Bernie Lamar in the 77. Caution is out. Jerry Robertson, 78, going around. Pull as quick as you can, bud. Little loop off two over there. We'll be okay. Didn't hit nothing. <laughs> Around Bernie goes. Ooh, good job, Bobby Labonte. 66 car. Yeah, you see fourth on the screen. Although he may have gotten a little bit of help Ooh. by Mr. Jamie McMurray in the 64 car. And look. Somebody's been there before. Backs into the safer barrier. He got hit pretty hard, too. Kemp had been out there for a while. So, uh oh. Uh -oh. Bernie Lamar is around again. And the caution flag is out. This is going to get uglier before it gets nicer. Wow, look at the left front of that thing. Jay Sauter was held one lap on pit road after he was a lucky dog for passing the safety vehicles too fast. Put him a lap down. Jay Sauter is the lucky dog again. Four cars in a wall for one and two. They're still wrecking. There's got to be some oil or something down in that corner the way they're still piling in there, huh, guys? You would think. Bernie Lamar again. didn't want to miss anything. Stacy Compton, <laughs> you're mean. Crash off a of pole here. Bernie Lamar. John Andretti's lucky dog right there. Yep. Ninth caution. Andretti is the lucky dog. Oh, man. But what? What? The 11 car. Is the 11 car having trouble? See how far, see yeah. how high he was at the same time that the 77 car. See the 77, 11's just riding around up there. It's Paul Menard. Interesting. Bernie Lamar to the garage under caution again. All right, you got the leaders in your mirror, Casey. And I bet there's some contact here. Oops. A caution of convenience? Oh. Check up, check up, check up. You're all good. Caution's out, caution's out. Not that anybody would ever do anything like that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, ouch. That's what Delana just said. Delana Hardwick, the team already see Bernie moving around inside the car. Taking off the safety equipment, that's good. That's a hard hit. Augie Vidovich in the four was the car closest to him, but that doesn't mean he's the yeah. one to hit him. Don't know what happened there by with that angle. But I'll bet you. Bernie will tell us. He'll tell us. And we may find out if we watch him for long enough. He's waiting for somebody to come back around again. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think he wants to talk to Augie after the race. Me and you, buddy. <laughs> Me and you.
he unfortunately never got a chance to retaliate because he was let go after this race officially. In 29 starts, Lamar only scored one top five along with three top tens and an average finish of 22.6 along with six DNFs and was only 21st in the standings at the time of his firing. But what coincided later on in the season was absolutely astounding. He ended up marrying a supermodel named Nikki Taylor and after just three dates, they ended up engaged. That's one of the quickest engagements I've ever heard of. And the funniest part about this whole thing is that they're not divorced or anything. They're still actually together. They have kids. So one of the quickest engagements I've ever heard of actually ended up working out. So props to him for that. 2007 to 2008 saw him in and out of NASCAR for a brief period, but then he found a brief home with Braun Racing in 2009, having Dollar General once again as a sponsor. But the nine starts he made were pretty lackluster. Yes, he had no DNFs this time around, but an average finish of only 19th, along with just one top 10 at Kentucky, wasn't enough to have him do more races. Bernie Lamar's last start in NASCAR took place in 2009 at Milwaukee. He hasn't attempted a NASCAR race since, and it's pretty safe to say he's retired at this point. One of the fastest accelerations into NASCAR's top three series that you'll ever see, followed by a very steep decline. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.